Hello everyone, my name is Abby Hedstrom um, and this is my school profile project. So a few learning objectives to reflect upon the school's background realities, achievements and challenges, to be able to exhibit reflective and collaborative exercise qualities, gain the best guidance and preparation for the school's development review and planning process, and be able to create a learner driven school profile. Um, to start off, um, I added a quick definition of what charter schools are. I wasn't totally certain before I began this project, so I thought some other people might be in that same situation. So I decided to add this. So hopefully this will guide individuals through these schools by detailing just exactly what they entail. In doing this, people will gain a better idea from charter schools and be able to apply this information to their future careers. Charter schools are public Tuition-free schools that are open to all students, they're often operated independently from the traditional school district. They provide high-quality instruction from teachers who have the autonomy to design a classroom that fits their students' needs. I also included some commonly asked questions. Um, this URL at the bottom was a good resource that I used just to kind of help myself define um, what charter schools are and learn a little bit more about it. And on that website, I read the frequently asked questions and these three were um, three that I thought were really great um, in helping to understand what charter schools are. So you can also click on this link for further um, knowledge or pause this and be able to read these commonly asked questions. So, the school that I chose was Pembroke Pines Charter School. Some school history. During the early 1990s, the Broward County School District was the fifth largest district in the United States. A solution that was headed by the mayor was the vision to solve the problem of the severe overcrowding in the Pembroke Pines Public Schools. In working in accordance with the city commission and the city manager, the solution was this, to build the Pembroke Pines Charter School system. The school board of Broward County was relieved of the bur burden of overpopulation of such students. In addition, the reduction of student population from public schools has allowed the students of Pembroke Pines, both public and charter, the ability to be taught in an environment that is more conducive to learning. The current school system, in accordance to funding, Florida's essential wellspring of subsidizing for the capital needs of sanctioned schools is a public education capital outlay fund. In the course of the most recent 20 years, the all-out designation to their framework has diminished by 48%. If they happen to be supported at a sim similar level as in 2001, their framework would be distributed an extra $2.58 million for capital upgrades. And this um, graph at the bottom right screen shows uh, exactly that. So who are the people of Pembroke Pines Charter School? Student diversity, Hispanic population 39%, African American 26.6%, white 21%, Asian 7%, multiracial 4.6%, Pacific Islander 0.6%, and Native Americans 0.3%. The female versus male student population runs at 49% uh, for female and 51% male. It's located, um, the FSU campus is located in Pembroke Pines, Florida, 601 SW 172nd Avenue. Uh, some demographics, this school has 565 employees and approximately 699 students. Presently, the Pembroke Pines Charter School System has a waiting list of 5,961 applicants. So that is a very outstanding um, number. The student to teacher ratio is 17 to 1 and students on free and reduced lunch are 35 percent. And on this slide I also included school budgeting to give individuals kind of a grasp and an idea of budgeting at the school. So the 2019-2020 budget was 57.36 um, million and the faculty and staff. There are once again 565 employees in a student to teacher ratio of 17 to 1. So an employee evaluation for faculty 
Educators will get two assessments inside their first year of instructing. One assessment will start toward the ending of the main semester, and the second assessment will happen toward the ending of the school year. A pre-gathering is also offered before the first formal perception. Um, observers will inform instructors two workdays ahead of time of the pre-meeting date of the primary perception and give the date of the conventional perception. For trial instructors in up close and personal pre-meeting before all proper perceptions will be given, experienced instructors have the option of a face-to-face -face pre gathering and can convey utilizing electronic devices inside the electronic framework. Um, and the school system runs off of domains. In um, these domains, a graph I took from the website, and if you pause it and kind of blow up the screen, you can read them. But I'll just give an overview. So the first domain is classroom strategies and behaviors, and this kind of goes through. You can follow along. And then the second domain um, is planning and preparing, and that gives that one. And the third domain is reflecting on teaching. And then the fourth domain is collegiality and professionalism. So I also included a sample list of faculty. So this kind of gives um, individuals a view or an idea of the faculty working there. So Dr. Lisa is the principal and the assistant principal is Kimberly Pizzo. Student activities. So there are a lot of activities that are offered. S athletics and include boys golf, football, basketball, cross country, baseball, golf, soccer, swimming, tennis, and then girls volleyball, basketball, cross country, golf, soccer, swimming, and tennis. Um, there's also student volunteering, community service opportunities, trash pickup, field setup of various sporting events, line judging, sports keeping, various different clubs including art club, animation nation, band, book club, chess club, and fashion club. There's Black Student Union, Drama Theater, um, Health Occupations Preparation, Dancing, Relay for Life, Spanish Honor Society, Step Team, Student Government, National Honor Society, National Math Honor Society, and Summer Reading Activities. Um, I also included the Health and Wellness Policies. Um, the Pembroke Pines Charter School recognized the good nutrition and physical activity are essential for students to maximize their full academic potentials, reach their physical and mental potentials, and achieve lifelong health and well-being. A responsible approach to nutrition and physical activity promotes healthy weight maintenance and reduces the risk of many chronic diseases. Some of these diseases are asthma, hypertension, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. The Pembroke Pines School Char the Pembroke Pines Charter School have a responsibility to cultivate a school environment that helps students learn and maintain lifelong healthy eating and lifestyle habits. Many factors play a role in achieving a healthy school environment, including foods and beverages available to students while at school, nutrition education, opportunities for physical activity, and other school-based activities de designed to promote student wellness. Academic performance. So some test scores, um, and I included Pembroke Pines and then the average. So biology, the state average is 65. The Pembroke average is 85%. Geometry, state average is 56%. Pembroke average is 68%. Algebra, state average 61%. Pembroke average is 86%. History, the state average is 68%. Pembroke average, 86%. Science, state average is 53%. Pembroke average is 79%. Civic, state average is 71%. Pembroke average is 94%. English, state average is 54%. And Pembroke average is 83%. Math state average is 57% and Pembroke average is 87%. So theirs is obviously um, evident that it is significantly higher. Um, and then some student outcomes by percentile, I included college readiness. So Pembroke um, is 96% and the state average is 91%. 
And this difference is truly shown within those minority and lower income students. Um, Pembroke is once again 96% and the state average for minorities and lower income students are 80%. So this is just continued um, and it's comparing state averages and students who graduate from Pembroke have the following above average college enrollment rates, below average percentages of students who must take remedial classes before starting college coursework, below average percentages of students who must take remedial reading classes before starting college coursework, below average percentages of students who must take remedial writing classes before starting college coursework, below average percentages of students who must take remedial math classes before starting college coursework, and higher rates of return for second year of college. So from this, I concluded that Pembroke Pines Charter School is above average in quality. Students who attend this school are making above average percentages each year in regards to academics, and this school is proficient in college preparedness and caters to students of all learning differences. So some curriculum features, they offer various electives. Some of these include computer applications, debate, um, drama, advanced drama, leadership, and physical education. And then I included students with disability. Pembroke has a 3% suspension rate, whereas the state average has an 11%. Um, remember, the higher the suspension rate, the less time students will have for learning. So and this is another great feature about Pembroke Pines. Um, it effectively supports students with learning differences, contributing to a positive shift in equity. So some missions and goals of Pembroke Pines Charter School. Our vision as a community is to cultivate character and foster lifelong learning through a challenging educational experience in a safe environment. Empowering students for the possibilities of tomorrow is one of their slogans. Um, another one, it is our mission to prepare students to succeed in global society by providing a personalized and rigorous curriculum through excellence in teaching. And then again are the nutrition and physical um, wellness missions and goals. Um, and another one, the Pembroke Pines Charter Schools have a responsibility to cultivate a school environment that helps students learn and maintain lifelong healthy eating and lifestyle habits. And I also included this URL and this is the document for the wellness policy, um, the health policy for Pembroke Pines Charter Schools. So some of their successes that were, are very notable, um, in 2007, their charter school was named as one of the 2007 National Charter Schools of the Year. 2009, the Pembroke Pines Charter Middle School was named a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence by the U.S. Division of Education. This is the most noteworthy honor a school can get. Also, in light of the FSA scores in different components, their elementary and middle schools have procured an A rating for 17 continuous years. In 2015, the Pembroke Pines Florida State University Charter Elementary was additionally named a National Blue Ribbon School. As of late, U.S. News and World Report recorded the Academic Village Charter School as one of the country's best secondary schools of 2016-2017, acquiring a silver, silver award. In 2017, the school was named a School of Excellence by the Florida Department of Education. And these are my references, so thank you.